Look at that, fair 75 degrees, UV level low, visibility 9 miles. Sunrise 6.26 a.m., sunset 7.48. Oh, that's in like one minute. <laughs> cool. Well, maybe we'll catch that out my bedroom window. Hmm. Well, and I didn't make a vlog yesterday. Why didn't I make a vlog yesterday? Because I just was so grubby and not in the mood that I just couldn't even bring myself to do it. And um, it was just a rough day. Um, you know, everything that could go wrong, I didn't get much sleep yesterday either, and it seemed like everything that could go wrong did. Uh, my poor son was trying to help uh, my husband cook, cut some frozen hamburger meat and knocked off one of those USA pottery bowls of my husband's that was his mother's that I guard with my life. I don't even know how I left it there by the cutting board. I, sh you know, I don't even know. But you would have thought the poor kid, um, you know, wrecked a freaking Cadillac or something. I don't know. The man lost his damn mind. So, I have to keep my eyes out for a USA Pottery Bowl, medium size, blue, ribbed, light blue, baby blue. If anybody sees one of them around, snatch it up. I'll pay for it up to probably $30 a bowl now. I promised I'd replace it, which I know it's not the same, but it is kind of the same, you know. I've had that happen to me numerous times. Or I've either given up something that was special to me because I needed the money and was able to replace it later or whatever. You know, but it all works out. Then last night, my son shares with me um, some text messages that his father has been sending him. You know, and this is stuff that I've been meaning to start going over during this 50th year of my uh life on the planet because uh, I haven't shared much about my past with with people and uh, you know with with my uh, subscribers um, but you know what my past was like obviously has everything to do with what I am like today and um, and I think it's important to talk about a lot of it because very much of it is things that have caused me things like PTSD um, you know, uh, social anxiety, other kinds of, of, you know, reactive fears, all kinds of things. So a brief history about this situation is, is that I was 29 years old when I met this man. I was recently divorced. <clears throat> he was 23. Uh, we moved in together. He ended up in prison with their, in, in county jail at first, and he was in county jail for a very long time. And about the week that he went into county jail, I found out that I was pregnant with my youngest son. I uh, was with him for uh, quite a long while. And um, for the biggest part of the time, I think only about nine months out of the next four years that he and I were together, uh, that we were actually either living together or, you know, in the same house. We married, we got married, but he was either in jail, being a, out working on the road as a truck driver, or um, shacking up with other women. Okay. So last night, my son shares with me some text messages that his dad sent to him that were not only complete bullshit, but it's things that he has said over and over and over and over and over again, so many times that he believes it. One is that he didn't dump his son and run, which in fact, he did dump his son and his wife and his two stepkids here and left us for no apparent reason other than the fact that he had fallen in love with a prostitute. Okay, so this was in July he leaves us here. I'm going to give you a little time frame very quickly. July of 1996. 
uh, in October of 96, he calls and asks me for a divorce because over that period of time, he had sent me $250. I still have the receipt. $250 um, over a four month period of time. And my rent was $350 a month. I was working at his mother's cafe and his whole family knew everything that was going on behind my back and still put it, you know, tried to, wouldn't even, wouldn't even try to help me understand what was going on when everybody knew. Okay. So what he tells my son last night is that I was running around with a state cop and I was also dating my current husband and that's why I didn't take him, that I, that's why we got a divorce, but in fact we got a divorce because he, he, he lived with two women in the first six months that we were separated. I didn't live with anybody. I didn't live with anybody for 16 years. And the same man that I started dating after he and I were separated and he'd already lived with two other women is the same man that I'm with today. Not only did he abandon his children, but every woman he gets involved with, he calls their kids his kids. And he leaves all the other kids in the dust. And he, and he has all these like 15 kids that he claims as his own, but only when he wants to. And he has his current wife convinced that not only was I a whore, and that's why we got divorced, but that his, his own mother put her hands on me and held me down so that he could beat the crap out of me so that he could kidnap my son. He didn't put his hands on me until after he'd already kidnapped my son and was gone for six weeks with him. And I went to his house to get my son. And by God, by the next day, I had my son and a restraining order to boot. His mother never held me down. She wasn't even there. She went to court and lied and said she was, but she wasn't. No one else was there but he and I and our son. So anyway, <clears throat> I called his little wife last night and I left a message on her phone that if she believes the bullshit that he tells her, she's going to have a real problem just like I did that spanned over seven years. And the only, oh, and he told my son that when he was born, I handed him my son. Now let me tell you that he got out of jail the day I went into labor. So I was pregnant the whole nine months by myself. Why I'm going to hand my baby over to somebody and say, this is now your responsibility. You deal with that. I don't want my son. Okay. Then, like I said, he was out of jail for about six months and was put back in jail when his appeal bond was denied. And he didn't see his son again until his son was almost two years old. And then... We were divorced by the time we were separated three months after my son's third birthday. And I have cared for him myself the whole rest of his life with the help of my boyfriend, my husband, his stepfather, my son's stepfather, who helped me raise all three of my kids even though we were only dating. We never lived together. I supported myself. And I'm damn mad that after, what, from 1997 till now, this man who told me he had no regrets about dumping his family and leaving them in the dust has made up these ridiculous stories to pass on to his son that he abandoned and never paid a dime of child support for till he was 14 years old. And only because I forced him. So, if I seem a little bit bitter about men, sometimes, I wonder why. And that's only one horror story in my horror story file of men. But don't ever think for a minute that he, and I hope he's watching this and I hope his wife watches it too. Don't ever think for a minute that he didn't dump his son and run. Like he said last night. 
oh, he dumped his son and his whole family and ran so fast it would make your head spin. And, it, and then tell my son, and go ask your grandmother and your great-grandmother and your great-aunt what really happened. Well, they do know what really happened. They know that I stayed here so that my son could have a family. Where was his father at? This was your hometown, not mine. You piece of shit. And you took us from a home that we loved. Roswell, New Mexico, where we had a church family. We had a beautiful home. We had pets. We had beautiful things that I had accrued while you were in jail. That you left every scrap of it behind. Every toy, every book, every stick of furniture. And dumped your family in this shithole. Without a car, without a phone, without a home. Take me to court, you son of a bitch. Take me. I want to go to court with you. I am going to take you to court. And I'm going to sue you for every dime of back child support you owe me to this day, which is $29,000. I told you not to screw with me. Now, this is a huge part of my 50th year because I'll be damned if I'm going to go the rest of my life listening to you spout bullshit when the one sure person my kids had in their life was their mother because their fathers were never there. And you know that. So you... Go to the pearly gates as soon as possible when you get there and have a chat with your father about the way you've treated your kids and your family and your parents and everybody else. You crazy, sick bastard. Now, now that I've got that off my chest, It was a great day today. It was gorgeous. And that's the only thing that messed with me all day. Was hearing this BS that this ridiculous idiot has the audacity to tell my son about his mother. You know what? If I had left you for another man, I would have been proud as hell of it. Because you would have deserved it. But I didn't leave you for another man. You left your family. Period. Point blank. End of story. And everybody in town knows it. And you best not come here spouting that bullshit around this town. You think you're so big? You think this is your town? Yeah, well bring it. And we'll see. Now, what has turned into a ridiculous rant about my ex-husband that I haven't seen in 16 years ends there and if he's got something to say to me leave me a video response because I'd love to hear it and that's the end of that I'm going to come back and make another vlog because you ruined my day